Hello everybody and welcome to another tip of the day and this one is actually going to be answering a question that somebody had off of my last tip of the day talking about um, how to better get how to get better solves for elbows and arms and what have you coming from your from your mocap so the the question was is how do you limit uh, the rotational data only on one axis and so in this case we want it only on the Z, we do not want keys on the um, Y or the or the X. So here's some things that you can do to better control what joints get data and how the data is applied to them, or what data is applied to them. So, uh, oh, and just FYI, this is a metahuman, and so that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, I've got my little my little animation here. Um, and if you stick around to the end of the tip of the day, I'll just kind of give a quick rundown of how I've got my MetaHuman set up here in Motion Builder and a little a little bit on how I can copy all my rigging from one MetaHuman over to another into another file and so on and so forth. So anyway, without further ado, uh, here is here is the solution to um, better controlling what objects get what data and what data you want and so on and so forth. So, all right, so let's look at the elbow. And if I look at the elbow and I go to my F curve editor and I go to rotation, uh, I can see that I have rotational data on my Z and the uh, X and Y are flat line. There's, there's no rotational, there's no data on it whatsoever. But there's also, but there's also like data on X, Y, and Z, which is the translational data. So we wanna get rid of translational data uh, we want to uh, get rid of X and Y. So um, the first things first, something that you can do is select a single skeletal joint and come over to your property and go to editor. And there's a default keying groups here. You can select default keying groups and you can uh, pop it over and it will add it to your property. So if I close that, I can now see default keying group has been added to these joints. And by default, they're set to default, which is translation and rotation data. Really, it's whatever you have set up over here in your key controls and uh, how, you're, um, how you've got everything set up for keying. Uh, second thing I want to do is I want to come in here and I want to select uh, my, my character in its entirety, which I have a little group set up here for quick selection. So I've selected every joint that uh, I'm going to actually be baking down. These are the joints I care about. All these extra little joints in here are just metahuman stuff that we don't need to worry about. All right, so I've selected everything. Um, metahumans do come in with a root joint, which is different than a regular typical joint. So we're just going to go ahead and deselect that. And uh, we're actually going to deselect the pelvis as well. In fact, you want to deselect any joint that also needs rotational data added to it. So we only want to select joints that get rotational data. So with all those joints selected, I'm going to go back over to my properties and I'm going to go to my default key settings, which is right here. And I'm going to switch it down to R. So now they're only getting rotational data. And as a test, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select everything uh, in my scene. And I'm going to select all the curves. And it's a little choppy and slow because there's a lot selected. And this is pretty dense data. And this is a very long take. And I'm just going to select everything and delete it. All right, so now I have nothing on these joints. There are a clean slate. Let me go back to my elbow so that we can uh, specifically look at this. So the next thing I want to do before I plot everything down, so if I scrub, I can see I've got some animation on here, uh, is I want to come over to, uh, actually, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to select everything again while I'm thinking about it. So go back to my selection set and select everything. And here's something that you can do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, almost forgot. Deselect anything you, you want to keep translation on. Just only select the ones that uh, you're, you're wanting to lock down uh, just rotational data only. Uh, okay, so with everything selected, you can come up here to your translation and you can right click, give it a second because there's a lot selected, and you can say remove property uh, from extension. So this is essentially removing translation 
from the character extension. And so now when I plot, nothing's going to plot down to translation. So I'm just going to deselect and let's do that real fast. Plot to skeleton. Give it a second. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back on. Just make things a little bit cleaner. And now if I look at my joints, whichever one, I can see that nothing has been uh, keyed on translation only on rotation, but we still have rotational data on our uh, elbow with at, on the axes we don't want, which is uh, X and Y. Now I cannot actually right click on one of these and just remove a single axis from the character extension. You actually, when you have to have the whole thing X, Y, and Z in order for it to work. Uh, but what we can do is we, I'll go ahead and I'll select X and Y and I'll go ahead and I'll delete this to kind of show you there's now no keys on here what I can do is I can come here and I can right click and I can lock select it so now I've locked those two axes and now if I go ahead and I plot again plot to skeleton All right, so we've plotted everything back down and I'll go ahead and turn my control rig back on just to make things a little bit cleaner. Um, and I go here and I select uh, my elbow and I select rotation. I can see I only have curves on the Z. And if I come back here to double check and I right click and I unlock selected, I can see that there are no keys on uh, X or Y. So I'm going to go ahead and relock those. So any joint in the, in the body that um, that you do not want, that you want to be a hinge or any, any joint that you only want to have uh, one axis or two axes or whatever uh, receiving data or baking or plotting down, you can actually come in here and you can lock these things down. I'll, I will caution uh, doing this only because this is not something that I've ever really done before. Um, so there could be repercussions if there are, you know, please, please try it out and, and leave some feedback in the comments so that, uh, we can all be warned if this is a, a good idea or not. But, uh, this is a way to be able to better control your, your skeleton and what you're rigging, uh, in, in motion builder. I can, you can also see, I've got like these little dotted lines now. So indicating that I have done something <laughs> to this, this in particular joint and everything still works. I'm still still typing. If I turn off my, let me go ahead and turn off my control rig and that way it's just skeletal data and I can see my, looks like my, everything's working as, in, as, in, as a expected. So anyways, there you go. There's a way to better um, lock things down and, and have better control over your um, over your character, over your skeleton, what and what you're doing and what you're exporting to Maya or to game or to, to whatever. Uh, but yeah, just just be cognizant that uh, there are going to be joints that you want translation on and those you want to make sure that you do not break it, break them because then you'll break everything. All right. Uh, that is my tip of the day. Now, if you are a little bit curious uh, in this little part two section of tip of the day uh, about MetaHuman and getting in and I can kind of show you a little bit of like what I have done. So I have uh, my MetaHuman here, which is uh, <laughs> which is happens to be me. But uh, so I, I digitized myself into MetaHuman and stuck myself in here. Not very pretty, am I? I kind of, <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, so uh, I decided to go a, sim a different route with this. I decided to try something that we see in Maya a lot where we have our uh, driver rig which is this red skeleton right here, driving our actual game rig, our game skeleton, which is this, this blue skeleton right here. And if I turn this on, uh, what I have characterized is I have the red driver rig um, characterized and being controlled by the motion builder control rig. And then I have those, uh, if I go over to my navigator and open up my constraints, I have a, um, a relation constraint, which is actually really huge. 
And what it is, is it's, it's a, uh, a relation constraint that's using the driver skeleton to drive everything, which is all these nodes right here. Um, so it's these, these nodes are actually driving the, the blue nodes. The driver skeleton is driving the actual game skeleton. And what I've noticed is I'm actually getting better forearm rotation and some, some other little, little things that happen within the, in the rig, um, for driving things. And that's kind of how it's set up in my, you have a driver skeleton that is driving, uh, the game skeleton and then a combination of that is actually driving all these extra little through um, um, set driven keys inside of Maya. They're driving all these extra little joints that I kind of mentioned earlier, which are these these little finger joints and these little um, shoulder joints. And you can see them right here. If I if I start moving this guy around, so you can you can kind of see how these extra joints are kind of like moving. And uh, let me go ahead and grab. Let me turn my control rig back on and unhide my skeleton. And if I grab my, oh, see, unpin my hand here. If I start rotating this up, you can see that uh, the manipulation of the driver skeleton is actually driving uh, all these little helper joints, all these little extra bits, these muscles and if I go the other way, you can see it's actually driving the other direction. So this is all hooked up with relation constraints in here using different uh, nodes, which uh, I'm not going to get to in this video, but uh, just that's how I am handling this. And what I did was I, while the red driver skeleton is actually what's characterized and driving my, my character, uh, I have set up a character extension for uh, my actual game rig, which is also right here in the selection set. And so as a, so what, what I have is a character extension, which is export skeleton, which is what I called it. And inside here is all the, the joints that actually get exported to the game. I don't worry about exporting the, all these little helper joints because these are actually rigged inside of Unreal and I don't ever have to worry about those. All I, all I need to worry about are the main uh, joints in the skeleton. So anyways, that is kind of a quick high level overview of what's going on and it is um, a driver skeleton which is characterized a motion builder is driving a game skeleton here which is a character extension which gets baked down every time I plot down and then that this is what get this blue one is what gets exported to, to game and in case you're wondering how that works uh, when you don't have any tools to export I just select it I go file uh, motion file export, tell it what, just, I put some gibberish in here, hit save, and then uh, you can select the, the take that you, or takes that you want to export, and I say overwrite, one take per file, and selected models only. I do selected models only, so only the things that I have selected gets it uh, exported, and um, and then here, if I have like extra things I want to export, I can come in here and I can rename body, chair, headset, or props or whatever you have and in my, uh, and then you hit export and it just exports that skeleton. So anyways, um, in my scene, I have a bunch of extra things rigged. I've got this chair rigged, this headset rigged. So I have these things all set up to, to export in my, my scene, my little cinematic I'm working on, uh, my own, this is my own personal project that I'm kind of playing with in my, in my spare time. Uh, but anyway, so, um, that is kind of the gist of how I've got my MetaHuman set up inside a motion builder, how I'm dealing with skeletal data, how I'm kind of how I'm exporting it. Um, if I was working on a big production, I'd prefer some tools to help me out, but just my little, my little tiny production that I'm working on here, <laughs> I, uh, this, this is how I'm running. So anyway, I hope this helps. Uh, and, uh, again, if this, if you like this, give it a thumbs up, 
Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. If you have any feedbacks or comments, please leave them. I do try to read every single comment, the good and the bad. Luckily, there's not too many negative comments out there, which I'm very appreciative of. And I really appreciate this community actually coming together and um, and kind of like working together to get better at what we're doing, which is uh, you know making really cool animations and dealing with with motion capture and hand key and, and everything in between. So, anyways. That being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your day and happy animating.